held on the lands of the traditional owners. Sorry, I'll just get rid of that message. Um, where I am today, that's the land of the Wurundjeri people. Um, and I wish to acknowledge them as the traditional owners, as well as recognize the traditional owners from wherever you may be joining us today. I would also like to pay my respects to the elders past and present. Now, for those of you that don't know me, Sharon, although I'm pretty sure I know most of your faces or have spoken to you, I will be moderating the webinar or the chapter meeting today. So if you have any questions or would like to make a comment throughout the session, if you just want to put it in the chat box, if you would like to keep it anonymous, you can send it directly uh, to me. So there is that function as well. Our video with our guest speaker has been pre-recorded today. Uh, so she did say she was happy to answer any questions that we sent through to her after the webinar. So I'll make sure that you receive all of those. And I'll hand back to Louise. So hi, everybody. Hi, Julie. And uh, a few faces, I don't know the faces, I know the names well. Um, I just need to do a little bit of official explaining. Not only is this a professional development for our placement solutions nannies, but it is also open to anybody that's interested from Australia or indeed anywhere else in the world because it's run at the behest of the International Nanny Association and this is what we call a chapter meeting. They are being held virtually. Will Melbourne ever get out of lockdown? I assume we will. Um, and one day, maybe we will get to have live meetings. Uh, the purpose of the meeting is that the International Nanny Associ Association, like myself and like all of you there, know that being a nanny is an isolated job and we all believe in continuous learning. If you think you know it all, as somebody said recently, then it's probably time to retire from looking after children because each child is different and you're always learning. As you know well, that's like... A, taking coals to Newcastle. I don't want to. Uh, now, now, what I'm going to do now is I'll just quickly explain how Placement Solutions became involved with international nannies. And that was, I went to a conference in 2010 in San Francisco and uh, felt like I had come home. There was a community of nannies and agencies who were speaking the same of the same kind of things that I had been speaking about in Australia. Here comes Laura. And uh, it, it's the same old tired chant, but I don't think we'll ever get sick of it. Nannies deserve to be treated with respect, supported and paid legally, so you can get on with doing your job, which is keeping children safe, happy and healthy. And everything we do is for that purpose. And I'm happy to say that the International Nanny Association with their code of ethics and their conferences, etc., as with other associations like the Great British Nanny Conference, like APNA and like other associations across the world, we have one purpose. Now I am going to share the screen and I'll put on a video from the person that organised the chapter meetings. Here we go. I'm Kate Matevich, founder and chair of the International Nanny Association Ambassador Program. Welcome to the return of chapters. Each chapter is hosted or co-hosted by local ambassador program team members. We are so excited to be bringing the benefits of the INA into more communities around the world. We look forward to seeing you virtually at chapter meetings this year. Have a great meet. Oops. Sorry, I'll have to get the music off. Oh, good, <laughs> terrific. Now I will go into the pre-recorded interview with Tonya Sakowitz, who some of you have been lucky to meet in person. I think both Michelle and Laura have met uh, um, Tonya. Tonya, um, well, I explain in the video. So without further ado, 
and this is recorded and can be, the whole thing's going to be recorded, but it can be sent to you later. Just bear with me, I'll have to find it on the screen. Oops, help. <laughs> I will get there in a moment, everybody. Good evening. Welcome okay. to this live chat session. We are very, very thrilled. We are going to be talking to my colleague and uh, Friend, uh, Tony Sakowitz, who I first met in Cancun with the International Nanny Association, uh, and she was running a session called Green Proofing Your Nursery, which absolutely fascinated me. Now, Tonya runs a company called Newborn Care Solutions, and for today's new parent, there's an overwhelming volume of advice on offer, much of it which changes almost week to week. Sadly, this often creates confusion and even anxiety, making new parenthood much harder than it should be, which is, of course, where we step in as nannies or newborn care specialists. For this reason alone, I was very inspired by Tonya Sackowitz when I met her, and I was keen to introduce her newborn program to professional development at the earliest opportunity. Those of you who have been with uh, Placement Solutions for a while know that we ran a slightly Australianized version of Tonya's course. Tonya runs US-based newborn care solutions, an educational organization that aims to benefit parents and children by providing nannies, doulas, and other child carers with training in the optimal care of newborns. After working as a nanny early in her career, Tonya recognized her passion for newborn care. She eventually turned her attention to parent education in newborn care. And through that work, she realized there was a lack of quality education in infant care specifically aimed at nannies. An idea formed to create a specialized program that focuses on training nannies, postpartum doulas, and infant daycare providers to specialize in the optimal care of newborns and families. She said, from the outset, one of Tonya's main aims was to take a scientific approach to what her organization was teaching. We really wanted our program to stand out and focus on proper research and evidence-based information rather than the typical, this is my experience kind of training that was available. Newborn Care Solutions now offers both foundational and advanced courses in newborn care along with other specialised courses and their very popular elite NCS and master NCS trademarked programs. The foundational course covers the main topics we believe every newborn care specialist needs to know, while the advanced courses and the others go into more depth and have been designed for those who are certain this is where they want their career to go. Tonya and I met through our shared involvement in the INA. We both served on the INA board together for a number of years. And of course, before that, we met in Cancun at the first international conference out of America. We found that we shared a vision for excellence in training. The concept of newborn care as a specialty is relatively new to Australia. However, there are only minor differences in the recommendations of newborn care between the two countries. Babies are babies, everybody, from Africa to Australia to America. What both places definitely have in common are the benefits to families that employ a newborn care specialist. Tonya also has a particular passion for green proofing, minimising the exposure of babies to toxins that are a direct contributor to major health issues, including cancer. We 
without further ado, may I introduce my colleague and friend, Tonya Sackowitz. Thank you, Louise. That was a lovely introduction, and it is lovely to get to be here with you. We Are you going to ask me a bunch of questions, or do you want me to just talk about the things that we've talked about? How would you like to cover our material today? I think we'll let you have a head start, and uh, anything you haven't covered, I'll bring up later on. All right. Sounds fantastic. So one of the things that we talked about and has really come up a lot is kind of what is a newborn care specialist? What is their role? How do they fit into the household? And, and how are they kind of different than nannies? That comes up a lot. And nannies oftentimes have great experience working with newborns, but there's a difference between having experience and being a specialist. And we do have to be kind of careful around that term because our company is US based, but we are cash accredited out of the UK. And so we are an internationally accredited company. And in the UK, and I'm not sure if it's this way in Australia or not, so y'all can give me a, a thumbs up or not, is a specialist actually refers to a medical doctor in the UK. In the United States, that is not the case. Um, and so we have to be careful around the terminology. Um, but nevertheless, the, the, the point of all of it is that the focus is on really having a solid understanding about newborns. What is normal? What is not normal? What are best practices that optimize their health, their brain development, their sleep patterns, their nourishment, their growth, looking at all the different things to ensure that they're thriving. Um, because Louise used the term optimal, it's also a term that I use when I talk about the care a specialist should be providing. We're not there just to keep them alive, we're there to ensure that they have the optimal opportunity to thrive and to be the very best that they can be. And that care comes in the first 12 to 16 weeks of life generally in terms of a newborn care specialist being in the home and supporting parents as they adapt and adjust to either new parenthood or adding siblings to the children that they already have. Um, because we know that both of those come with their own sets of challenges. And that involves having a significant amount of knowledge around newborns around what's normal, as I mentioned, but also around newborn medical conditions, things that will arise or could arise during that time period and recognizing those early signs. And I will tell you that one of the things we teach about in our foundational class is a condition called pyloric stenosis. To date, in the last six years, we have had 11 students save babies' lives by recognizing the early signs of pyloric stenosis even before their healthcare provider recognized it. And that kind of knowledge, that kind of understanding is really key. Now, of course, we are not medical providers. We're not making a diagnosis, but we are certainly observers and we are certainly reporters. So we can observe what we're seeing and we can report it both to the parents and to the healthcare provider in order to ensure the babies are being well taken care of. Another aspect of it is that we have a really solid understanding of supporting both nursing and baby sleep, because those are two things that almost every new parent wants to know about. And so having a solid understanding around what works, what doesn't work, what's normal, what's not normal, and educating parents around that is a huge component of being a newborn care specialist because who doesn't love sleep? And every new parent wants to know the answer to the question, when is my baby going to sleep? Now, we can't give them the answer of on this day, it's going to happen. But we certainly can say, you know what, if we work together and set this baby up for success, then they will sleep through the night when their body is biologically ready to do so. And 
there is there are ways to do that and of course that's part of what we teach that's part of our curriculum is how to set everybody up for success so that when the baby is biologically ready they will organically speak to the night all on their own nobody has to cry babies don't have to cry parents don't have to cry the caregiver doesn't have to cry there's ways to do this that are successful and pain-free for everyone and at least within the U.S., and then I'll ask Louise to kind of share how it may or may not be in Australia, is in the U.S., this care can come in the form of overnight care, sometimes daytime-only care, but that's not a common request. But it's overnight care, or what we refer to as 24 sevens. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, sometimes it's 24 five. Um, and yes, there is a break, that's built into that, but it's essentially around the clock care or overnight care in the great majority of cases, and it's provided in the client home. Um, is it that way in Australia, Louise? No, you saw me shaking my head then. We've got very strict industrial laws, and uh, uh, you know, no one is allowed to work for longer than 12 hours in the care facility. And uh, we certainly get lots of requests for overnight nannies. And uh, uh, we even do some day, day work because some parents say within a 24 hour period, I don't want to sleep. I don't really know if it's day or night anymore. Yeah. It's cheaper in the day then. We'll have a day uh, newborn care specialist. If I could ask you something about some of the points you, you um, brought up. Now, I just want to throw out a few terms to you and uh, that we've used over the years. Uh, 32 Hi. years I've been in business and you've been in, in doing this for I've forgotten how many years, but pretty equivalent to it. Um, maternity nurse, mm -hmm. mother craft nurse, mm -hmm. night nanny. Okay. Why don't we use those terms anymore? So, Are they the same? Yeah. Yes and no. <laughs> so that's a loaded, loaded question and answer. So maternity nurse is a term that's predominantly used in the UK. It's not exclusive to the UK, but it's predominantly used in the UK. Mothercraft nurse is predominantly an Australian-based term, but again, it's not exclusive to that. Part of the reason why it is not used in the United States, because as I mentioned, the term specialist is not allowed to be used for our industry in the UK because it denotes a doctor. In the United States, a nurse is a term for a licensed medical professional. Yes, and yes. we are not licensed medical professionals. So it's actually illegal to use any term in the United States which could claim a licensure which you do not have. And that's illegal in all 50 states in the US. Um, there are also specific laws in the great majority of states and in a lot of cities in the United States where it is specifically illegal to use the term nurse unless you are what's called a registered nurse or a licensed practical nurse or a licensed vocational nurse. So we don't use the term maternity nurse. We don't use mother craft nurse. We also don't use night nurse or baby nurse. Although those are still what we would call common language terms. Parents still use them because they don't necessarily understand the laws around it. Um, it was 2007 when the International Nanny Association adopted officially the term newborn care specialist to refer to this specialty niche within the nanny industry. And that's exactly the answer I wanted. Uh, it's probably no surprise to you for exactly the same reason in Australia. We don't refer to mother craft nurses or maternity nurses. It's an old fashioned term. We even have a couple of nannies on our books, hi Michelle, that, that were trained with a mother craft nurse diploma. But that term, the nurses, um, the nursing federation have said very loudly, that's our term. You're not a qualified nurse. This is different. Um, I'll say so from a marketing perspective, of course, we always have to have those keywords in our uh, website because exactly, look, parents are still looking for babysitters, cringe, cringe, mm -hmm. 
as well as night nannies, etc. They, they don't know what it's called, but they soon stumble upon what it is that they're really looking for. The other thing I wanted you to speak to about, because not everybody understands this term, cash accredited. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that's going back to the English of what we used to call the NNEB and our very own diploma of children's services is based on the NNEB. But what do you mean by cash accredited in a worldwide context? Right. So CASH actually is the home of the, the original home of the NNEB, uh, and it originated in 1945, um, and they are based out of the UK. In the United States, uh, our industry is completely unregulated. The nanny industry is unregulated, the newborn care specialist industry is completely unregulated, and yet there are many people who are asking for a qualification. They're asking for something that says, hey, I got training and I am an expert in this. And so we looked at a variety of options. It was actually released, our mutual friend, Kathy Webb, who first put a bug in my ear and said, you really should look at cash. And frankly, I looked at cash and I looked at their requirements. And my initial response was, we'll never be able to do that. I'll never be able to do that. Their requirements are very stringent. But after two years of very hard work, we were actually awarded accreditation from CASH International. And so we are the only newborn care specialist training program in the world that currently has a designation from CASH uh, as being an accredited program and People who take our foundational training, complete it, and pass the exam are then, along with several other requirements, able to apply to Cash International for a designation for certification. It is, they have a special term for the way that they put it. They say in the end, specialized in newborn care because they get, don't use that term specialist. But nevertheless, they are acknowledging the training. They're acknowledging 4,000 hours of experience of working with new babies, um, along with several other things. And so people actually can get that. And CASH is a, an organization that is recognized around the world. Um, we recently just had a student whose husband was stationed overseas. And she is a professional nanny. She reached out to the nanny agency in her area and they said, we're not working with you, you're an American. And then she said, but I am cash certified. And they were willing to accept her as a candidate because cash is recognized around the world. And they are recognized as a leading um, organization for setting standards that training programs have to reach. So it's not me making up a standard and saying, whoa, look, we stamped this on you. It's cash saying your program has to be this good or we won't endorse it. Um, and we had to go through, like I said, it took us almost two years to get everything up to their standard. And they literally review every single word we teach. And I think that rolls into a conversation I know you and I have had and Kathy Webb and you and I have had about what is the world's best practice? Where is our industry going? I include newborn care specialists within the greater nanny industry, within the greater child care sector. And we've certainly had all of our um, ideas and assumptions and everything we thought we knew uh, turned on its head over this uh, pandemic that has hit the world. But world's best practice, is this, a, we know the term cash in Australia. I know the term cash because I taught the diploma. Uh, our diploma was 30 years ago, loosely based on the NNNB. But is that where the world should be heading? We should be um, looking at something. It doesn't necessarily matter whether it comes out of Australia, the UK or anywhere. But we need a starting point. We need a benchmark. Would you like to talk about, is that a good starting point, the CASH program? And what else should we be doing so that we're all on the same page 
across the world and can provide consistent care and knowledge to parents. Yeah, I I absolutely agree with you that I think there should be a at least a universal base standard because you said it right at the beginning perfectly. Babies are babies. They don't know where they're born and their needs when they are born are the same. Now, are there going to be cultural differences around the world? Of course there are. There are even cultural differences right here in the city that I live in, right there in Melbourne. There are cultural things that will impact us. But at its core, the physical care of a baby, at its core, the things that help babies grow and thrive and develop are the same. No matter what culture you're from, no matter what country you're born into, your body and your brain need the same things to grow and develop. And I would love to see there be a universal standard for at least those basics, and then an acknowledgement that some things are done differently in the UK and some are done differently in Australia, but that the core basic care never changes. I would love to see that. Um, cash is absolutely a good start worldwide. They are the gold standard, and that is a great place to start. Um, It'll, it will depend on recognition and it will depend on the demand for the services. It certainly is something that is growing. Um, we have students on four continents now. So, and that brings me into, uh, and I know that this is pre recorded, and uh, I hope that my nannies that are watching this and listening on the INA chapter meeting will be, um, and any other Australian nannies, of course will be madly putting things in, in the chat section. But uh, as far as I am aware, the old, what we called Mothercraft nurse course that devolved into the diploma course, which has got lots of units in it and how to run a long daycare centre. And it has dropped all of the newborn care specialist training. So there is nowhere in Australia currently that you can do this training, which might be a good way to, we um, we ran your training by changing it a little bit and running it as a live event over a number of weekends. We're no longer doing that post pandemic. Uh, and there seems no need to do it when we can so easily go online. Mm -hmm. What would, what can you offer our students that either want to begin getting into newborn care specialists from nannying or that would like to do it as an extra benefit. They've got the experience, they might even have um, the training, um, but what could you offer that, uh, and would it be cash recognised in Australia as well? Um, offer in terms of? Your course your online training course? So our online training is absolutely available in Australia. Um, that's one of the beautiful things is that our courses are all recorded at live events. Um, and so just like that, they're pre-recorded and uploaded and students can log into them, log in and out all they want to. Um, and they can go back and watch it months or weeks later. But we have ongoing support for our students. We have a student Facebook group. We have a team of over 30 experts who mentor our students ongoing, including Kathy Webb, um, who answers tax questions um, for the US market in anyway. And we also offer a lot of support for our students you know, via that, but also they can email us with questions. Um, if somebody really needs some specific one-on-one -on -one help. I still hop on phone calls. I just offered, offered to hop on a phone call with somebody today. Um, but we've assembled such an amazing team of experts to mentor students. That's a resource. Um, and if, certainly if there was enough interest, Louise, and you had some people that wanted to know more and want to hop on a call and chat with me, I'm happy to do something like that. If there were a group of students they wanted to take it online, but wanted to facilitate some discussion after the fact. We're happy to do things like that. Um, it's easier to do that in a group setting, obviously, than one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but we have lots of ways that, because we're a small company, we can be flexible and can work with students uh, 
and are happy to do so. As far as the course itself, everything we teach is scientifically evidence-based and hard for research. And our research is international. So I've just created two new classes and probably 40% of my resources for the research are from um, scientists and medical organizations outside the US. Um, we feel it's very, very important, not just for our US-based students, but for our students all around the world to have resources that are A, relevant to them, but B, that speak to their cultural practices as well. So we look at things on a worldwide scale. Um, the impact of that are, are simple things, like the fact that we've been teaching for six years about the early introduction of specific allergens to reduce the risk of food allergies. It's been recommended around the world for over six years, but the American Academy of Pediatrics only caught up two years ago to that recommendation. Um, and we just feel it's really important to have a more global perspective to the best of our ability. The reality is I am an American and I work in America, so that's always gonna influence what I teach. Um, but we love to learn more about how things are going and to support people in other countries. Look, that's terrific. We are actually going to have a lot of inquiries and as Tonya knows and uh, a lot of people know about me being an ex-school teacher, I believe that you should always be learning. So uh, I would say that any childcare professional that goes, I'm qualified, don't need to know anymore, they're probably not sitting on this Zoom meeting for a start. But secondly, I always think that there is something new to learn. I'm going to give you an example of where I was blown away after a uh, casual conversation I had at a um, afternoon tea that was organised for sellers of baby products. And I sat next to a woman, uh, I better not mention the name, I don't want to get into trouble. I sat next to a woman that sold baby capsules. You know, the ones that, that you put your babies into when you bring them home from hospital. They're made of hard plastic. And I said to her, I have done a green proofing course in Cancun. And uh, one of the pieces of advice that really surprised me was that to tell new parents straight away that the first thing they should buy would be before they start buying all their baby products is the baby capsule and they need to take it out of its box and they need to air it because, now correct me if I'm wrong here, there is formaldehyde in the uh, plastic that is used and that needs to be, I think you used the term that I don't know in Australia called gassed off or something, mm -hmm. gas. Oh, and you yeah. need to open it and you need to put it on the veranda and you need to make sure that the smell is well and truly gone weeks or months before you bring your baby home. Well, of course, I did that with my two grandchildren, made sure that that happened. I didn't give my uh, daughter a choice. Uh, but when I boarded up next to this woman, I was sitting next to her. She just looked at me in amazement. And she said, I don't think so. Our product is very safe. And uh, she called me back a couple, I've worked with her on a couple of um, expos, and she called me back and said, you're absolutely right, but the research is just caught up with that. I said, well, it actually wasn't me, it was Tonya Sackowitz that told me that. So if you take one tip away tonight, that is no. Now, do you want to talk more about that? Because this is just my memory tonight. So yeah, you are correct. So most baby products, um, particularly if they're made in the United States, but the reality is in most developed countries, baby products have very strict regulations about the things that they can be made with. But more importantly, the strict regulation comes around what is called fire retardancy. And a lot of these products, so when you talk about use referred to it as a capsule, we refer to it as an infant bucket. But regardless, that has to be soaked with flame retardant so that if there were an accident, it's not going to light on fire very quickly. The other thing that's soaked with flame retardant, aside from all the furniture in your house, is 
children's pajamas. And both of those things are heavily, heavily regulated in terms of the flame retardancy and flame retardants are toxic. And they are a carcinogen, they cause cancer, they can cause a whole variety of other medical conditions, but there's clear science that shows that they cause cancer. Now, what we do with those is we take them, open them up, ideally 30 days or more prior to the arrival of the baby and allow them to spend the time outside in the sun. And here's why, the sun breaks down the toxicity of those chemicals. It does not reduce the flame retardancy, but it breaks down the toxicity. And in doing so, it reduces the exposure of the infant who's going to spend an awful lot of time in that very carrier. And so there's a, a solid science behind that that shows that that is what can happen, um, that there is a direct correlation between that exposure to cancer development. And we are exposed to these toxic chemicals on a huge variety of ways. And I'm not a, a green freak and I don't you know, live my life on, you know, in a tent and stuff. I live in a normal house with normal things, but there are small, simple things that are free, like off-gassing, which is what that's called when you open it and let it sit out, like off-gassing that minimize your toxic exposure. You can't eliminate it, but our bodies are designed to process it to some degree. It's when we overload our body that it can't cope anymore, and then it becomes a dangerous situation. So you do remember that almost perfectly, Louise. And formaldehyde is, <laughs> yeah, formaldehyde is one of the chemicals, absolutely. But there's, um, that's oftentimes in plastics and pressed materials. Um, it can be in things like changing tables, cribs, um, dressers, things that are made from wood that are made from a pressed type of wood or what we would call um, plywood. In the United States, I'm not sure what it's called in Australia, um, but there's a whole variety of things that have formaldehyde and other carcinogens, but it's predominantly the flame retardants that are so bad. And those infant capsules, as you refer to them, are one of the most toxic items out there. So yeah, absolutely. And, and, and even just that point of knowledge is uh something that uh, everybody watching here tonight, uh, just following up that tip, as well as uh, moving forward, if you want to know any more about uh, Tonya's class, this is not an advertisement for Tonya's class, this is a, uh, but I want to say I do heartily endorse her training. You can always learn more. You can always learn something different. And for those of you who are thinking that you would perhaps like to move into specialising with babies, I reiterate that at this point, unless you study midwifery, this is your only chance to get that specialised newborn care training. Is there anything else you would like to, uh, to bring up, Tonya? Um, I think probably it would be wise to know that um, at least one of the big changes that we have seen post-pandemic here in the United States, I've heard that it, this is also occurring in the UK. Um, I don't know if it's occurring in Australia or not, but parents are absolutely not only looking for proper training, qualified training, but they're also looking for people who have additional specialties, kind of a somebody who can do it all. We would refer to it as a Jack or a Jean of all trades in the United States. Um, so they're looking for people who also have lactation training. They're looking for people who also have training as postpartum doulas. And even families who are looking solely to hire a nanny are absolutely more willing to consider someone who also has newborn care specialist training. Our students are reporting to us every single week that it made the difference between them getting hired or not for a job. Um, even really hardcore qualified nannies who have 25 or 30 years experience were struggling to find work and then took the class and within two weeks or so had positions being offered to them 
because parents felt more comfortable, especially families who are looking at adding to their family farther down the road. They're thrilled to death to have somebody that has some solid experience around newborn care. But a broad, diversified background is huge because Louise said it beautifully, you should never stop learning. Um, I tell my students, I'm kind of direct and to the point. And I tell them that the day you think you know it all is the day you should retire. And so, you know, I keep learning. I took a ton of classes during um, COVID online, just like the rest of you. Um, but I took a ton of classes. I'm always learning new things. And the benefit is, is learning new things helps me bring new information to our students as well, which then furthers them in their career and the service and the care that they provide to families. That is wonderful to hear. Uh, the Australian nanny landscape has been very up and down during lockdowns, particularly in Melbourne, where we've enjoyed more lockdowns, I think, mm -hmm. feels like, than anywhere else in the world. And a lot of disenchantment with uh, aged carers and child carers feeling very unappreciated. But, you know, a little bubble arose out of that with lockdown, where I would say the one thing that has come out of lockdown is a greater appreciation of what nannies do, what newborn care specialists do, what training can be involved. I've always worked with the idea that the adults in the relationship, the agency, the nanny, the newborn care specialist and the parents work together to raise, as Deb Gilboa said many years ago at a conference, we're aiming to raise resilient, responsible adults. They're not babies forever. They're not children forever. It's how they turn out. Let's not let go of that. And babies' basic needs are much the same. And I mean, we can all list them, but what an honour and what a what a joy it is to be involved in helping new parents uh, master yeah. the, the whole thing. Absolutely. That, that's probably, I say all the time, look, I'm good with babies. I'm really good with babies. I read them well. I understand them. I recognize what they need and can respond to that. But my greatest gift when I work with families, my greatest talent when I work with parents is empowering them and leaving them to feel confident about their ability to care for and help raise their own child and confident in their abilities, confident in their child, because that part of where it comes is understanding that you can trust your child as well. They'll show you what they need if you pay attention. Absolutely. And, I love that. Yeah. and, and empowering is, is uh, we want parents to learn and to, and, and sometimes, they're learning when they don't even realise that they're learning. You know, you, you pick up the baby, you wrap the baby in a certain way, you pat the baby in a certain way, etc. Without being judgmental, and I know better than you, I've been doing this for years. Compassion is always at the core of how you go in uh, and work with new parents. And there are parents that, like the rest of it, we human beings, we don't know what we don't know. So we're always learning. Okay. Uh, I'm going to thank you for your time. I'm going to say, isn't this fabulous that we are able, that we have the technology to do this? It's eight o'clock in the morning here at the bottom of the world in Melbourne, Australia, cold winter. Tonya's in Scottsdale, Arizona. I don't know what the time is there, but I bet it's sunny. It is almost four o'clock in the afternoon. And on US scales, uh, we are about 110 degrees today. Um, we were 123 last week. So yes, we are very, we are very warm here, as you can see. <laughs> I'm spending a lot of time in the pool outside of work. And I'm sitting here with a heated blanket on. Yeah. All right, I'll stop the recording now and uh, Hello, everybody. Look, 
Shan and I thought we'd have a slight change of plan and throw it open to everybody to talk. We will, if you're interested in finding out in Tonya's courses, please put uh, information into um, um, the chat session so that we can uh, send that off to Tonya. But if I learned anything aside from the off-gassing story, it is that our greatest gift is to empower parents. Now, was some of you squirming about some of the terms? Mothercraft, nurse, no, we don't use that term anymore. Um, come on, talk to me. Uh, Shan, can you um, mute everybody, please? I don't know how to do it. I don't think I have capacity to do that, but... I had, a question. I had a question. Is ca cash equivalent to a sequa here? No. I don't think no. it is, Rach. No, it isn't. Maybe Helen can answer that for us. Cash is a governing body. It isn't actually a particular exam. It is the governing body of a lot of exams. And it's not only childcare and newborn oh. care specialists. It's, um, it does all aspects of care. So um, I'm an NNEB, um, doesn't exist anymore. Um, it, it stood for the National Nursery Education Board and CASH uh, took it over. The course is completely different to what I did. I went to college for two solid years on a five day a week course, nine to five. You did three weeks in college theory and then you went out for three weeks on placement and then you went back to college and back out. And that's how the course was done. It's not done like that anymore. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of the old ones like me were just saying the ones that come through today, they're not as good as the old ones were. <laughs> but that's just an opinion, but it, it's something... You know, and we got our little badges and, and actually mine's on my office desk because that's where it stays. And that is my NNEB badge. Cool. <laughs> um, you know, and it was two years of solid hard work. Uh, but no, cash is, um, they go from level one to level seven. So yeah. it's, there's a lot, lot that cash do, but you can have a look on their website. I mean, mm. and the, the other great thing is if you do take a cash diploma, you can then become part of cash alumni and they have a lot of other stuff going on and they have a lot of free stuff as well. So you invest all this money into a cash diploma now, but you will get out a lot of other stuff that you can then do that is actually free. But then I don't know whether it's available across the world. Because it's, an Ameri because it's a British governing body, I don't know quite what there is, but, you know, um, it is a recognised qualification across the world. But we still, here in the UK, we still use maternity nurse. We still use it. Um, newborn care specialist certainly hasn't caught on really here. People will call themselves maternity nannies because they've been nannies and then they've gone into the maternity side of it. Um, some will call themselves, if they work nights, you're a maternity night nanny or you're a night nanny or you're a night nurse and that. So, yeah, we haven't really changed our terms. The Mothercraft, I remember that being used, but I knew that had come from Australia, but we had yeah. used it over here as well. And, and everybody, I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce Helen. Helen is here representing uh, Britain, you know, the Olympics. She's representing Britain. Um, great, a great British nanny is Helen. But Helen is also the, the co-vice president of the International Nanny Association. So Helen McCarthy and those of you who came to Nanny Palooza Oz in 2016 may well have met Helen in person. Then and you've been a great supporter of not only INA but but of us. I think it's also a little bit easier. I did want to explain. Tonya would have loved to have been here, but give her a break. It's three thirty a.m. in the morning in Arizona at the moment, so we couldn't really expect her to to be here. Now, as far as I'm aware, Michelle Davis here, who has been with our agency for a long, long time, you are a, a an old-fashioned mothercraft. Mother mother yep. And yep. Laura, were you a mothercraft nurse too, or are you diploma trained? 
So I'm diploma trained, but I was the first year through without the Mothercraft um, Nurses Board certification. Right. So they yeah. they eased off, they eased out of um, being registered with the Nurses Board for a Mothercraft Nurse certification. Right. And I was the first year that couldn't apply for the Mothercraft Nurse um, accreditation. Right, yes. It's interesting. I mean, the terms are, uh, um, I understand where the nurses are coming from and what a long fight they had. Sounds like everywhere, but in Australia to be properly recognised too. But we have our own battles. And uh, um, I think that, uh, you know, I often find it amusing that we have on our, our website when it comes to search terms, we have misspelling of babysitting as babby sitting because people are more likely to type that in than newborn care specialist or mothercraft nurse or maternity nurse. They don't know what they're looking for. They know they need help. And I think part of that's part of what um, Tonya's courses have done for us who have taken Tonya's courses with you guys is that it's made us more aware that, um, that the term newborn care specialist isn't widely recognised or understood in Australia. No, no. And it will only be, you know, what's in the name, as somebody said. But uh, I think it is important. It's, uh, I like that catch cry, um, I'm not a babysitter, I don't sit on babies. Yeah. It, it's, uh, all right. Any, any, Chan, would you, are there any questions on the chat line you'd like to read out? Or? Um, there were a few comments, but there weren't any real specific questions. But if anyone, fit, you know, thinks of one afterwards and wants to send it through to me, I'm happy to pass it on to Tonya. Good. So any, any more questions? Because if not, I will, uh, I'll move to... Uh, to put up a display of, you'll all get sent this anyway. And we are recording this. This is all being recorded for, I suppose, for the library of INA. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of recording is, Helen. I think it's so other, so <clears throat> everybody can, at the moment, can attend anywhere in the world. Um, and it's just there, so you can hop in and that. Okay, well, I will um, share the screen again. Just be with me. I hope I can find it. No, I can't. I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to, uh, I'll put it up in the notes. And uh, <laughs> this is where I miss being in an office, guys. There is nobody <laughs> to come over my shoulder. <laughs> no Rachel or Shannon to help me either. <laughs> um, I just want to, want to do some thank yous. As usual, I want to thank Shannon for being my tech-savvy person that kind of keeps us um, even remotely going. I want to, of course, thank Rachel, who it is her rostered day off, and here she is. Hi, Rach. Hope you hey. had a good day. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, we've got a wonderful team in the office and they're enthusiastic and energetic and we've really worked hard to, to keep going over the pandemic and make sure that you nannies are getting the support you want. And, of course, the last people I want to thank is you nannies, Australian or otherwise, for your calmness, your resilience, the joy you bring to so, so many children. And the relief to the parents, of course, that uh, I had a conversation with a nanny that wasn't able to be here tonight. And she, her face just lit up when she was telling me about the 18-month-old that she's been watching his speech patterns develop, etc. cetera. Um, <laughs> Shannon corrected me and told me I didn't meet Tonya in Cancun. Apparently, I met her in Florida, in Tampa Bay. So I stand corrected on that. Uh, and I, the number one thing I got out of that is that uh, across the world, I think we are united in 
making a better path for children and for nannies. And, uh, and um, let's keep doing this. I hope everybody's okay in lockdown. I can't see anybody from Sydney here that kind of more shell-shocked, I think, than we are. We Melburnians are a little bit used to it, as are you Londoners, I suppose. Yeah, we're out of lockdown now, so a life has resumed as normal, <laughs> as much as normal. I did see a press release today from Bappen, which I'm yes. not sure what that stands for. but The British yeah. Association of Professional Nannies. And they said that they want the Prime Minister to personally come out, and who apparently has a nanny, personally come, the British Prime Minister, um, come out. Boris and Johnson. Thank. Yes, Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister, come out and personally thank the nannies of Britain. Well, I'd like to see the uh, Prime Minister of Australia, Scott Morrison, come out and thank the nannies of Australia too, but uh, we'll see. Okay, on that note, I'll say good night. Thank you all for being here. We will Thanks be in for coming, contact. everyone. Jan, can you make sure you save the chat? Because that's how yeah. we get that needs it. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. And Thank Laura, you. are you feeling better? Mm, You're looking kind okay. Of, kind of, yeah. Oh, good. Okay, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you.